I'm Chris from Needlepointers.com. Today I'm here with a new quilt tutorial. This is my James and the Giant Peach panel quilt with a scrappy border. The center of this quilt is a panel and this pattern can be used with any panel. This sunflower quilt was made with a very similar scrappy border so you can see how versatile this scrappy border pattern can be. One of the differences between these two quilts is that the James and the Giant Peach quilt has a wider border on the sides and a thinner border, inner border along the top and bottom. On this quilt, the border is the same, the inner border is the same size all the way around. The outer side borders of this quilt is also wider than the top and the bottom outer border. This adds some extra interest around the quilt and provides more width than height, which is what I wanted for this panel quilt. All four sides are pieced together on the outer border. For the quilting on this quilt, I decided to put blue vertical double lines through the panel and then horizontal lines through the borders. Keep watching to learn how to make this scrappy border for a quilt panel. For my James and the Giant Peach panel quilt, I will need one panel with James and the Giant Peach. I will need three coordinating fabrics. And these fabrics do not have to be from the same fabric line. They can just be fabrics that coordinate with the panel colors. And then one more fabric that can, will be for the first border around the edge of the panel. And finally, we will need something for the backing. This is the layout of my panel quilt. As you can see, it will have a small border of one fabric around the outside, and then it will have a second border around the outside of the pieced fabrics, and you can see the different colors, so the yellow and the yellow is one fabric, the orange is another, and the blue is another one. So the blue fabric pieces will be from my motif, and the other two fabrics, this one is there's an or one with white with oranges, and then this one is the other printed fabric. So next I'll show you my cut fabrics. I've cut all the pieces I need for the panel, and here's another view of the panel. The first border around the panel is a multi-size border, so I have three strips cut for the larger part of the border, and then two strips for the thinner part. The thinner part goes along the top and the bottom, and the three larger strips will go along the sides. The second border around the panel is a piece border, and that will be made up of these two fabrics, plus the, this fabric, which, these four fabrics, which are uh, fussy cut from the motif fabric. If you'd like to find out the sizes of all the fabrics to cut for this quilt, please click the link in the description of this video and go to our website, needlepointers.com, which where we have a whole page and photo tutorial of this project, and it will have all of the cutting instructions. So let's get started piecing this border. I've cut my panel down to the appropriate size for this project, which is 22 and a half by 42 and a half. The first step in creating this quilt will be to piece the first border around the outside of the panel. So I'll start by piecing the top and the bottom border onto the panel. I have my first border, the top border, pinned along the top edge of my quilt, or my panel, and I have threaded my machine with a white top thread and bobbin thread. I've put my quarter inch piecing foot onto my sewing machine. If you don't have a quarter inch piecing foot, you'll just have to use your quarter inch guide in order to make sure you stitch one quarter inch seam allowances throughout this quilt and I have it on a straight stitch at the normal length. I've put a few pins in to hold this, but I'll take the pins out as I go along, and I'll just sew a quarter inch seam allowance to sew on this top border and then the bottom border. The side borders are not quite long enough to reach the whole side of the quilt, so I've cut three, three pieces of fabric and what I'm going to do is cut one of the three pieces in half, and then I'm going to add the piece onto 
the end of each of the one onto the end of each of the two strips, other strips that I cut. Now for piecing these, I'm going to use a straight seam for this one. I think it would look better because the fabric has this stripe in it. Most of the time when I would piece two pieces, two borders together, I would use a mitered seam. So I would piece them, put them together like this and sew a, a diagonal seam across. We have a tutorial on how to do this and I'll put a link in the web page for this project to our tutorial on how to piece the mitered borders together. So for this I'm just going to put them together and then sew a quarter inch seam. And so you can see it's pretty invisible there and I, then this piece now will be long enough to piece onto the sides of the quilt. And I'll do that for the second one. And then I'm going to sew these two borders onto the sides of the quilt. The next step in this quilt is to sew the second border, which is shown on this diagram. I will include this diagram as a printable PDF in the, on the web page for this project. So follow that link in the description section. Hopefully you can see, but the border on the top is yellow, blue, and then orange. And on the bottom it's orange, blue, and then yellow. So I have those pieces laid here. So it's yellow, blue, and then orange. And then here is the orange, blue, and yellow. So I will assemble these two strips together by sewing in between these seams. This seam, these two seams and these two seams. For the sides, you can see both of them go yellow, orange, blue. But one's facing, you know, one's going this way and then the other one's going with the blue is on the bottom. So the blue is on the top here and the bottom here. So I have those pieces laid out here and so I have the yellow, orange, and then the blues. But my blue pieces are directional. So I have to be careful and I have to put one blue piece with the it facing one way and the other blue piece it's going to face the opposite direction. And so that way when I assemble it onto the quilt, this, this one will go on the side, this, this side, and then the other one will go on this side. As for the other ones, I'll just be sewing be the strips together between the pieces in the two seams here and here together, which then will give me four strips to be adding around the outside of my quilt and I will press the seams to one side. So I'll be back after I have these strips put together and then we'll talk about how we put this together and it's a little bit different from normal because if you notice we have overlaps on each corner and so what we'll have to do for that is do some partial seams and I'll explain that once I come back. Okay, as you can see I have my four borders sewn together now and I have pressed the seams. So our next step is to sew the, this border onto the quilt. Now as I discussed before, this quilt will have, it has overlapping seams on the corners, so we will have one partial seam to sew on this quilt. And so it, the first top border I'll sew on first and I will sew it I will pin it across this way and I will sew it from here and then I will stop an inch or two before the end of this border and I'll leave this just hanging free and then I will continue with this border on this side because then I can sew this border completely on and have no partial seam. I can then continue with this border and I can continue with this border. So then once I get to here, I'll have this still open, like not sewed, and I'll sew this last seam up to here, and then I will take this last piece of this border, lay it on top, and sew the last partial, that one partial seam closed. Now if you 
try to sew the borders on going this direction, you're going to end up with four partial seams because when you get down here, you would end up running out and you can't sew that little bit at the end. And then here, the same thing. You can't sew this little bit and the same here. So by going this direction around the quilt, it makes it easier because you only end up with one partial seam to sew. So let's go over to the sewing machine and start sewing this first top border. So just a reminder, the border across the top is the yellow, blue, and then orange. So I've picked out the correct top piece, which has the yellow, and this is my blue piece, and then the, the orange. And then the part that I won't sew is going to be on the left side of the quilt. So I will lay my piece on lining up with this side with right sides together and I will line this up over on this side and place a few pins just to hold it in place. So there's the piece on and as we expected there's a piece not or on fabric right now and I will stop sewing, you know, actually I'll put the pin there to remind me to stop sewing. And we like to put two pins as a reminder. So then I'm going to stop sewing a little bit before the end. I need to have at least enough so that I can have the seam allowance and when I put the last border on, I can sew up to the end and then we will flip it out and then we will sew it. So now I will sew this piece on. And so now I'm approaching my stopping point. And take these two pins out. And I did back tack that. So now I can take this and, and iron it open with the seam to one side and then I will continue and add the next border onto the right side of the quilt first. Here's the top border and I've pressed it with the seam facing that way. This is the next border for on the side and so when I align this border I'm going to Put it on here all the way up to the end and put a few pins down and this will continue all the way down to the bottom of the quilt. So here's the bottom of the quilt over here and you can see this side comes right up and matches up with the bottom. So then I'll sew this seam on, press it open and then I'll put the next, the bottom border on and it's going to start, you know, the same way from the this open seam all the way across, and then I'll put the last side on and the left side of the quilt, and I'll come back and show you how we do that final partial seam. Okay, as you can see, here's the last side border coming all the way up, and it lined up with the edge of this border, and here's my partial seam that I left. Non, not sewed before and I will just fold the lay this over just like that and then finish sewing this seam from here to the end. And, and you see that's all there is to it. Now we have the whole border on all the way around. So here's my finished James and the Giant Peach quilt top. And the fabric sitting on the right side will be the backing for this quilt. This quilt top is 32 inches across by 48 inches tall. If you would like to make a bigger quilt, then you could always add another fabric and border around the outside of this quilt. The next steps for this quilt will be to layer it with the batting and the backing, and then quilt the top. And then lastly, I will put a binding around the quilt. Check out the webpage 
about this quilt for some tutorials on these last steps on your quilt and I will be back after I finished off the rest of the quilt. I have used a layer of flannel as the batting for this quilt. I would normally use a cotton batting but this quilt will be donated to comfort cases and the quilt can be rolled into a smaller size with flannel as the batting. I like to pin base my quilts so I layered the backing, flannel, and quilt top on my table, smoothed it all out, and placed pins throughout. We have a tutorial on how to pin base, so visit the webpage to find that tutorial. For the quilting on the panel, I didn't want to cover it up with dense quilting, so I decided to quilt vertical lines through the quilt. The two lines that are closer together were quilted half inch apart. The double lines are two and a half inches apart. For the quilting, I used a variegated blue, green, and yellow thread. To quilt the lines, I used my walking foot. I used my favorite Chaco liner chalk marking wheel to mark the lines before quilting. I always use a chalk marker when marking a quilt as I don't trust the other marking pens with disappearing ink. For the borders, I decided to quilt horizontal lines one inch apart. I first mark the lines across the entire quilt at the top and the bottom. Then I mark the lines on the sides. A few of the lines had to be a bit more or less than one inch apart because the panel section is not an even number of inches. When I quilted the border, I went back and forth in a continuous line by stitching in the ditch close to the edge of the panel. This way I didn't have a lot of starting and stopping. This is what the back of the quilt looks like. I showed you a different white fabric with the same motif earlier. It ended up that I didn't have enough of that fabric for the backing, so I decided to use the same fabric with a yellow background instead for the backing. For the binding, I decided to use a simple flange binding. I used the border fabric from the inner border as the flange and this yellow with the motif on it for the board for the binding. This is one of my favorite bindings because it's quick and easy to do. It does not require any hand sewing as you sew the binding down along the flange. We have a tutorial for this flange binding on our website so look for a link in the written tutorial for this project. I hope you enjoyed learning how to add the scrappy binding to a panel. Like and share our videos and if you are not a subscriber Subscribe to our channel so you won't miss future videos. Help us spread our videos by sharing them with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Visit our website, needlepointers.com, for lots of other quilting tutorials and free projects. While you are there, sign up for our weekly newsletter so you won't miss our new tutorials. Happy quilting!